note that this content is for adults only. Viewer discretion advised. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe, like and share. Hello everyone and welcome back to another live stream with me, Gisela K. This is Grizzly True Crime and today we're going to be looking at a case from Florida, Jacksonville, Florida. And it's from 2022 and I've been following the case but at the time there was actually almost, there were no arrests for about a year. And then when they made the first arrest I was like, oh, there's going to be so much more to this story. So I just kind of kept an eye on it and boom, there really was so much more to the story. So I'm going to bring you as many details as possible today. So if you like a deep dive and presentation and map time and all these things we do here at Grizzly True Crime, please like and share. You can share with hashtag Jared Breidigan, which is the victim's name. And also Grizzly True Crime would be helpful too. So today we will be doing a deep dive. I've got a presentation for you. We'll be looking at some uh, snippets of the press conference from body cam footage, all sorts of things. The usual that we like here, there's even a little bit of document time and all sorts. So thank you so much for being here. Welcome to all my moderators. Thank you so much for everything that you do here at Grizzly True Crime. Welcome to all my patrons. I hope that you enjoyed my forest jog video this morning and where I briefed you just a little bit about what I'm going to be doing today. I've been working on that since then, since I got home. <laughs> I've been working on this uh, for you and welcome to also all my members, all the new members, OGs, original Grizzlies and all the new subscribers. There's always people subscribing during a stream. So welcome to all of you as well. Don't be shy. And remember, if you don't want to chat, that's OK. Just make sure you subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss out if you do like my content and you want to see when I next upload. OK, I created some YouTube shorts for you guys today as well with some updates in other cases. So sometimes I do these little mini updates as well. So make sure you check those out, too. P.T. Notterman, thank you so much for spoiling Fury. He's very, very spoiled. Very. <laughs> thank you, P.T. I really, really appreciate it. And so does he. Um, and thank you so much for the sticker earlier. Um, I'm so sorry. I can't remember your handle name. And you said you sent this to Kirsten, who is the victim's widow. Oh, shame, man. The victim's wife. Um, thank you so much for sending it to her. I hope that I cover this really well and make sure that the focus is on the victim and on justice for him. Okay, so let's get into the presentation that I've made for you guys. Let me just move myself a little bit so we've got some space. Okay. Uh, Anyanet, welcome to Grizzly Supporter. And anyone joining, I'm just going to put a statement out there. Anyone joining, welcome to membership. Please check out the members only playlist because there's something we did, I think, two days ago or so. Lots of content for you there to catch up on. And mods, if you could please help me thank people while I focus on, on this. Okay. So, Jared Breidigan, 33 years old. He was born on June 29th of 1988 in Warrensburg, Missouri. He moved with his family to Jacksonville at a young age and graduated from the Douglas Anderson School of Arts uh, with a class of 2007. He attended Utah Valley University, graduating in the spring of 2014 with a BS degree in digital media with an emphasis in cinema production. Jared had a longtime interest in videography and was an accomplished user experience UX designer. He served as a senior UX designer at Canopy, Director of UX at Web.com, Chief Technology Officer at Clean Simple Eats, and was currently a Senior Design Manager at Microsoft. So I don't know if any of you saw the headlines last year where they said Microsoft executive ambushed and gunned down. Maybe you remember that. That's what this case is about. I've been watching for updates and really waiting for that big red flag <laughs> to become like, okay, we knew it, right? Oh, man, which is the ex-wife. We're going to get into that. Uh, his highest purpose in life, however, was his role as a husband to Kirsten and as a father to their kids, Liam, Abigail, Bexley and London. So we're going to get into all the details of the family structure as well. But he loved life. He was a great dad. Family was number one to him. And this is a terrible, terrible loss. Jared, this is coming from his obituary. 
some of these points here. Jared was an awesome husband, father, son, and friend to many. More than anything in life, he enjoyed spending time with his children, building a playhouse in the backyard, creating a laser tag arena in the garage. Jared seemed to have endless energy creating memories with his children. One of his favorite hobbies was home improvement, especially when working alongside his wife. Together, they handcrafted wooden beams for the master ceiling, built a custom fireplace and office desk, uh, ship lapped walls and so much more. Jared was also the guy in the neighborhood who would loan you his tools and then show up to help you with your project. He was funny, happy-go-lucky, and even a bit shy, but a powerful presence in the lives of those he loved. He recently served in the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints as a Sunday school teacher to 11 and 12 year old youth who expressed gratitude for the fun he brought to the church throughout his creative object lessons and humorous stories that he would share as he taught them about the Savior. He will be deeply missed. This is a terrible loss of a fantastic father and husband and brother and uncle and everything. So this is a picture of him with his wife, Kirsten, who he was married to at the time, right? She said, we were thriving as a family. She does have a Facebook page about this case. And she's also got an Instagram page, Justice for, Justice for Jared B. Okay, so you can find those on Facebook and on Instagram. I'll make sure to put all the links in the description box. So Jared was happily married to his second wife, Kirsten Bridigan, or Bridigan. The couple had two of their own children together. London and Bexley. I've just uh, blurred out their faces as much as I can just to protect them. They are on those uh, Justice for Jared B pages. So if I just even show you a glimpse of them, you'll see the kids are there. But of course, here on the internet, on YouTube, we try our very best to protect minors from just the internet in general, right? Uh, so Kirsten was an account manager before becoming a full time mom. I mean, they were really happy. They were really in love. It's just terrible. Jay said, great job. G, love and appreciate all the hard work you and the mods do. Love from Arizona. Thank you so much. Okay. So they, Jared and Kirsten were married and they had their own two kids together. And they were also taking turns to look after the two kids that he had with his ex-wife. That's why you see the two of them with four kids. Okay. So the other two kids from the ex-wife were nine years old at the time of this crime. Twins, a boy and a girl. And so Jared was so committed to making sure he has his dad time with them. And he fought hard for custody, for shared custody over them. It was a very bitter custody battle is what people say, right? So uh, now let's have a look. February 16th of 2022. Jared was excited to spend time with his nine-year-old twin children and had one of his scheduled daddy date nights with them, something he always looked forward to. He normally would take them to dinner and then like a little activity. And so after dinner, he actually dropped the twins off at their mother's house in Jacksonville Beach, Florida. She was remarried and then made his way home to St. Augustine. We are going to do some map time so that you can see the exact road where this uh, terrible incident happened. So terrible crime. He called his wife to say that he was going to stop for ice cream for their two and a half year old who was actually strapped in the back of the car. And he said, I love you. I'll be home soon. I mean, it's so heartbreaking. They saw each other earlier in the day before he left for this time with his kids and they kissed each other and said, I love you and I'll see you later. And then he actually called to say, OK, I've just dropped off the kids and I've, I've just he had his two and a half year old in the back. Said, I'm going to get her some ice cream. I'll be right home. Love you. OK. Police officers later answered Jared's phone because his wife was like, what is happening? Like time is just passing and I'm not hearing from him and this is not normal. So what's going on? So she tried to call him and eventually police officers answered and told his wife that their daughter was unharmed, but that something had happened to Jared. Police said he was a victim of a targeted attack on a one way road that he traveled often. A tire was placed in the middle of the road. Jared couldn't get past it and stopped the vehicle, put on his hazards, and he got out to move the tire. He was ambushed, shot multiple times, and killed on the spot, with his two-and-a-half-year-old still in the back of the car. Oh, man. So, the police said this was a planned and targeted ambush and murder. 
Jacksonville Beach Police Chief Gene Paul Smith said in announcing the arrest, we're going to get to who was arrested first. Three people have been arrested, okay, for this murder, saying that a tire was placed in the road, that Bridegan regularly traveled to visit his two children, and that he was shot when he stopped it to apparently remove the road hazard. So you can see pictures here. Uh, Bridegan was shot multiple times at close range on February 16th of 2022 after he stepped out of his black Volkswagen Atlas to remove a discarded tire lying in the middle of a Jacksonville Beach Road. If you don't know, I'm South African living in the Netherlands, so we would say Volkswagen. <laughs> but for you guys, who are, my audience is mostly American Volkswagen. I say it for you, but I'm sure South Africans will be having a chuckle. Uh, thank you so much, Serene Blue. Yeah, you guys are saying, OMG, that poor baby. Absolutely horrendous. So then there were, there's a lot of press releases that came out as this case kept on developing. The Jacksonville Beach Police Department said on 2-16-2022 at approximately 8.03 p.m., officers were dispatched to a report of a person being shot in the area of Jacksonville Drive in Sanctuary Way North. Officers are actively working this investigation as a homicide. No victim information is available at this time and we are making family notifications. As more information becomes available, we will provide updates. Security video from nearby homes and businesses showed a dark colored Ford F-150 leaving the area. So they actually, the people who targeted him knew that this one road was the perfect place to target him because that road didn't have ring cam footage. It was very dark. It was easy to hide in the woods surrounding it and things like that. But the police were able to see on surrounding surveillance, wait a minute, there was this Ford F-150 leaving the area. Police also determined that the discarded tire and wheel belonged to a... 2004 Ford F-150 pickup truck. Okay, so then this was on 3-09-2022 where they say the Jacksonville Beach Police Department needs your assistance with locating a vehicle of interest in the homicide investigation of Jared Bridegan. On the night of 2-16, so February 16, 2022, between the hours of 5.30 p.m. and 8.30 p.m., the truck shown in the videos was in the Jacksonville Beach area. The truck is believed to be a dark colored, likely blue 2004 to 2008 Ford F-150, four doors with running boards, possibly silver, brown trim and silver, a silver tool bo um, toolbox. If you saw this vehicle the night of 2-16-22 between 5.30 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. or know of its current whereabouts, we ask that you call the Jacksonville Beach Police Department immediately at 904-270-1667. Okay, so let me show you this quickly. This is actually a video that they shared of that uh, vehicle asking for more information. So let me show it like this. It's only 20 seconds long. There we go. There you can see it. So yes, they were asking for the public's help and got lots of tips. And so that's what they had there. So to continue on, thank you all for being here. We're looking at this case from 2022, but there was a huge break in the case now. There's, the third arrest was made and it was of his ex-wife. So we're getting to that. Police said bullets struck the interior of the vehicle in close proximity to where the two-year-old was strapped into the car. An act that reasonably could have been expected to cause physical or mental injury to her. They do say she's show, showing signs of PTSD. Shame. Witnesses advised that the child was crying when they arrived on the scene. Three full minutes passed before Bexley, crying hysterically near her dying father, was pulled from the car by a passerby who stumbled on the gruesome scene. There was a $55,000 reward for information for Jared's murder. Yeah. Okay, so we continue on. Yeah, the child was so lucky, exactly. Now, Shanna Gardner Fernandez is Jared Bridegan's ex-wife. Oh, we're going to get snarky. <laughs> She's from Utah and met Bridegan while visiting a friend in Florida in 2009. The couple got married in 2010 in Salt Lake City. They started having trouble with her and her personal trainer and got divorced in 2015. She filed for primary custody 
of their children. Oh, and that's when the battle began. They say that she was plotting to murder him from 2015. So from when they got divorced, because he'd found out that she had allegedly cheated on him with a personal trainer. They got divorced. And since then, she's like, okay, she's going to fight for full custody. And she also started plotting his murder. You guys are like, snark it up. We, we'll, we'll get there. Uh, Mr. Grizzly's heard quite the VIP <laughs> snark today. So her parents financially supported them. And they were upset when he ended up with a cash settlement. So we can already see the um, enabling. You know how we normally see it with a baby boy? Oh, here's a baby girl right here. Mm, the parents were very much enabling her. Like, oh, can't believe he got a cash settlement out of this. Uh, yeah, she cheated on him with a personal trainer, by the way, allegedly. Okay, so the court, uh, the court file, right? Between the two of them battling for custody has about 300 entries and motions. They had twins, a boy and a girl, now 10 years old. Okay, so that's what we have. Eddie, welcome. Welcome, everyone. Okay, so we're, we're buckling up now. So he claimed that his ex-wife treated him in a disparaging manner in front of the children and installed surveillance devices in his car and the children's bedrooms. I was wondering how would they know exactly the path he drove? Maybe she drove with him many times before, but how would she know? So the surveillance devices in his car and the children's bedrooms and things like that yeah that sounds about right and she was saying that he you know was abusive and this and this but the thing is yeah he was the one that was murdered so i guess you could see where the truth was there you know in 2018 shanna married a maintenance man from her gym okay he's five foot tall he was the main for, for real the maintenance man at the gym and she's like oh yeah because she's planning already you know plotting allegedly plotting murder so she found a guy you know who maybe th could think like her be like okay baby i got a plan for us caroline said hello fury from sparky and olivia <laughs> fan dogs that's so cute thank you so she married a maintenance man from a gym she ran a baking company called beach baked 904 her parents are multi-millionaires who are the co-founders of the highly successful Stampin' Up! Arts and Crafts Company and Fictures in the Mormon community in Utah. So they own a huge company and support her fully in everything she does. Okay, so Shanna apparently planned to kill Jared since they got divorced in 2015. Now, Mario Fernandez Saldana met Shanna at a CrossFit gym in 2018 where he was a maintenance man. Shanna said that he manages rental properties and he has been a big supporter during the ordeal. Because remember, she's the victim. So after Jared's murder, she was doing the whole, ah, uh, this whole ordeal. You know, he's just been so supportive. But she wasn't at his funeral. She wouldn't let the kids go to the funeral. Oh man. Thank you so much, Eddie. Really appreciate it. In 2018... Apparently, he intimidated a neighbor because he didn't like that she was feeding stray cats and a formal report was filed. I looked a little more into that. I'm like, what does this mean? Apparently, he walked past the neighbor's house, the lady with the feral cats, and he walked past with a pit bull and was threatening her. But he says, no, man, he was just walking the dog. He didn't threaten her. But there was a formal report filed. I didn't see any criminal records, though. Picture on the left-hand side would be of Jared and his second wife, Kirsten, and their two kids, as well as the two kids that he had. Well, you can only see three kids in the picture. Um, but yes, it's a blended family there. On the right-hand side is Shanna, and far right would be Mario Fernandez Saldana. Okay, <laughs> you guys are like snark away. Now, Shanna was the last person in his orbit who saw Jared alive. So you know how in cases we're like, ooh, the last person that saw them usually would be the reddest flag in the room. It just is how it is. Well, in this case, it really panned out. This, she was the reddest flag in the room, okay? She was a red flag all along. Everybody knew it in their gut, but there was no proof, and you couldn't say that. And she's still innocent till proven guilty, but you know what I mean. She's been arrested. So for over a year, there were suspicions about her involvement in his death. She immediately went on vacation with her husband because it was just so hard on her, okay? 
She went on vacation with her husband, kids, and her parents, because she's got to take mommy and daddy along everywhere she goes, right? And so, celebrating spring break at Club Med, Sandpiper Bay, and posting joyous pictures on social media, because that's appropriate. On March 24th, 2022, days after Jared was buried, Shelley posted photos of the vacation. Shelley's her mother. She posted photos of the vacation on her blog, showing them paddleboarding, kayaking, and building sandcastles. Just like salt in the wound, you know? Just a few weeks later, Shanna cut all communication between the twins, Kirsten, and their half-siblings. And guess what? Those twins have still not been able to see Kirsten or their half-siblings, ever, since this happened. They have not been able to see them. Shame. They're staying with their grandparents now, which would be Shanna's parents, from what I understand. So, yeah, okay. The twins were not allowed to attend their father's funeral. Shanna's mother's blog said that they were not invited to the funeral. Before he was arrested, by the way, <laughs> Shanna quietly moved across the country with the twins, so she abandoned this guy. Okay, totally used him. Abandoned him, like, I'm off. Gonna live in a house that my mom and dad bought me. A million dollar condo. Just gonna live there. You just hang out here. Cool, cool, cool. We need to separate ourselves. <laughs> right. Okay, so she moved all the way across the country. 2,800 miles to West Richland, Washington. To live in a home owned by her parents. Hmm. Now, this is a little... Ooh, trigger warning, everyone. Ew. <laughs> they said this is just little... Little snark in between. Those who knew them before the arrest say that she became wilder and wilder as their romance progressed. She visited a tattoo parlor in 2015 asking for a genital piercing. A request that shocked staff who said she looked like a normal mother. <laughs> I don't think that comments are they're like, whoa, she looks like a normal mother. But damn, the thing she's asking for, I don't know, man. She went from this goody two-shoes girl to this wild lady. I just remember thinking, well, this is a changed woman, one employee said at the time. Oh, they were going completely crazy together, these two. Oh, no, no, no. Now let's look at this little blog post, shall we? I took a little screenshot for you of her mother's blog. Okay, and she said enormous amounts of love. And it was edited, because this is the original post. Mm -hmm. After Shanna, along with anyone who knew her, was uninvited from Jared's funeral services, Shanna and the twins planned their own celebration of life. It was so sweet to see Liam and Abby surrounded by family and friends as they recalled happy memories of their dad. Just before sunset, everyone cut flowers from beautiful arrangements, walked over the dune together and tossed them into the ocean as a farewell. The guests received heart-shaped cookies made by Liam and Abby with their mom's help, of course, to thank them for joining in the celebration. The event was filled with good food, lots of visiting and enormous amounts of love. I mean, you're really going to sit there and say that Jared's wife uninvited you. You were just not invited to that funeral. I don't believe that. I just don't believe that. Mm -mm. No, this typical behavior right here. No, the narcs didn't want to go. You know what I mean? I'm just going to say it like that. Okay. <laughs> Hold me back, guys. I'm getting snarky. So her parents also made a statement and said, Words cannot accurately express the depth of our sadness. Family is our top priority. We love our daughter and are focused on supporting her and our entire family as we help our grandchildren navigate this difficult and very confusing time. For their sake and all involved, we caution against further speculation and request privacy as the legal process runs its course. Oh, she's, she's facing the death penalty, by the way. Let that legal process run its course. In the meantime, we are thankful for the continued support Thoughtfulness and prayers being so generously shared by friends and loved ones. This now was on behalf of Curtin McConkie Law Firm in Salt Lake City, Utah, on behalf of Shanna, Shanna's parents. Okay, so Melissa Nelson, the state attorney for Jacksonville 4th Judicial District, announced, and you'll see her in the press conference, she announced that Shanna Gardner Fernandez, 35, has been charged with first-degree murder, conspiracy to commit first-degree murder, and child endangerment. And if you missed it, this happened on August 17th of 2023, when finally the ex-wife was charged. That was four days ago. Four days ago. This one was finally arrested. That was like, you know, when it's like, I knew it. And that's also what the family was saying. Like, yep, yep. Not a surprise there. But let's keep going. 
So Gardner Fernandez's family was quick to distance her from her husband. So not only do they enable her behavior, but they're also like, oh, we were not invited to the funeral. And they're like, we support our daughter fully. Just stop speculating. But then on top of that, you're going to tell everyone, no, no, no. She, <laughs> they were quick to distance her from her husband, Mario, saying in a company email to all employees, Stampin' Up! is aware that Mario Fernandez, Shanna Gardner's current husband, has been arrested in conjunction with an ongoing investigation. Shanna, Shelley and Sterling's daughter, and Mario have been separated for an extended period of time. We have no further details about the situation other than what has been reported in the media. <laughs> Not our lovely daughter. I mean... <laughs> Sure, maybe that husband of hers, I'm not sure, but she, he, she's got nothing to do with him. Nothing at all. Mm -mm, no, they've been <laughs> separated for a long time. Sure. Look at her shirt. She's like, I, it's fine. I'm fine. Everything is fine. Yeah, yeah. You keep telling yourself until you're arrested. And then you're facing the death penalty. Yeah, I'm sure you're saying that to yourself every day. When asked on Dr. Phil, this is now what the, the picture is of the ex-wife. Okay, the one that's facing the death penalty. When Dr. Phil asked, and don't get triggered by saying Dr. Phil, I know some people love him, some people hate him, whatever. We can be neutral over here, just chill and focus on the content, okay? <laughs> when asked on Dr. Phil what Kirsten, Jared's wife, right, what she thinks about Gardner Fernandez, who has publicly said she had nothing to do with the attack, or knows what Jared may have been involved with, Kirsten uh, Breitigan was uncomplimentary. I have never found Shanna to be a truthful person, she said, according to Action News Jacks. So I don't put a lot of weight into what she said, but I'm glad that she's on camera stating some things. The fact that she, I like that too. She's on camera stating some things. Hmm? Oh, indeed. You guys are like, OMG, the t-shirt on her, right? Yeah, luckily she was on camera talking. She was saying some things. I'm just trying to find that clip quickly for you. Uh, anyway, and so they said... Mm, saying something. The fact that she seems to me to be trying to be emotional. There's no tears. There's no real emotion. It doesn't come across as genuine to me. Exactly. We all knew it. You know what I mean? Thank you all for being here. Uh, so smart. This one thought, look at her. Look at her posing. This is the ex-wife again. The one facing the death penalty and many charges. Who's finally been arrested on August 17th of 2023. <laughs> okay, this was huge news. Heather, thank you so much. She's so smart. Okay, they, to clarify... Her wealthy mommy and daddy bought her a $1 million home to protect her from all these online rumors that she was involved in Jared's death. Early on, she hired prominent Jacksonville defense attorney Hank Cox to help protect her family from the pub uh, publicity and sensationalism that included invasive photos of her and her children at a local park and implications that she was involved in the shooting. She said the intense media coverage has become very loud and it made her children feel unsafe. Nice way to deflect, lady. My kids are 10. They understand everything that's going on, she told the Times Union. They see this and they are scared, terrified and struggling. Now, I do, I mean, the kids probably are. Scared, terrified, and struggling. But she caused it. So don't you come over here and make us try and feel sorry for you. It's your fault. Literally. My word. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly, yes. Okay, moving on. Shanna had asked a tattoo pilot staffer if they knew anyone who could shut him up. Referring to her ex-husband. Yeah, she was getting so annoyed with those custody battles. She was like, getting another tattoo. Okay. And then we were like, do you know anyone who could just shut him up? You know. And they're like, no, we really don't know. She later admitted to making the statement in an interview with a local newspaper, but denied any involvement in her ex-husband's death. The day after the couple's divorce, she reportedly listed this personal trainer as her emergency contact when she visited a local tattoo parlor to receive a piercing. And we know what piercing that was. Oh, we know. And so she's with Mario but listing the personal trainer, the one that she allegedly had an affair with, <laughs> as her emergency contact. I mean, that tattoo parlor, they, they really spilled the tea. I'm sure they got a lot more there. But uh, yes, there they are. Mm-hmm. The couple. On Wednesday, January 25th, a lot of things happened in this case this year. Wednesday, January 25th, 2023, Jacksonville Beach Police Department Chief Jean Paul Smith and State Attorney Melissa Nelson announced the arrest of Henry Arthur Tenen, then 61, on charges of conspiracy to commit murder, second degree murder with the weapon, accessory after the fact to a capital felony and child abuse. 
Now, he was already arrested before because he was already, a, he's got a long criminal history and he wasn't allowed to have firearms and they stopped him at a traffic stop and he had a firearm in the, I would call it the boot, I think you guys call it the trunk in America, there at the back, okay? And so he was already arrested on that and then he started talking, right? So <laughs> Stefan says, knock it up, G. Um, on March 16th of 2023, Henry pleaded guilty and agreed to testify against Mario. He had nothing to lose. So he's like, I'll testify against him. I don't face the death penalty. <laughs> so he testified against Mario Fernandez Saldan, Shanna's husband. And then on that same day, 34-year-old Mario was arrested in Orlando, Florida and charged with first-degree murder, conspiracy to commit murder, solicitation to commit a capital fel felony and child abuse. So let me see what I got there for you. It would be this one. Let me show you. Here's the body cam from when he was arrested. Keep your mind, Brad. What does that mean? He's a low rent. Yes. One second. One second. Go to where it says making a difference back there. So you're going to the back of my car, I'm going to search you real quick. Sure. Just pulling the water stands for me. You got anything on him? Fine. Got anything on him? Yeah. No. No? Nope. Really? You're always there, right? Uh, working. Hey, first time in 10 years. You know, when you guys finally put your feet down, like, I'm going to thank you. Sir, one more question. Yeah. Can, I, can I get in contact with my brother about my dogs? Dogs. I, have, I have three dogs. They're at a town. They're at a townhouse, but I just need my brother to be able to take care of them. Okay, we'll take care of that. We're not. We're not. You're not going to. We'll put you on the other side. Okay. Yeah. Can you uh, turn out? Can I turn out now? Yeah. News for Jack's I team. I sure. I'm not going to play the whole thing, but I will link it for you. Okay. I'll make sure to link it for you so that you can watch the whole thing if you want to. <laughs> okay, so let's continue on with what happened next. So yes, he was arrested and charged with first degree murder, conspiracy to commit murder, solicitation to commit a capital felony and child abuse. All right. So Tannen, the one who testified against him, pleaded guilty to shooting. He was apparently the guy who pulled the trigger. Okay. Tannen pleaded guilty to shooting Brightigan as part of a cooperation agreement that will send him to jail for 15 years to life. Charlie Delta Whiskey is asking, do we know when Shanna, uh, when Shanna and Mario split up? She moved to WA State and he to Orlando. Thank you. We don't know exactly when, but shortly after the murder, which isn't sus at all, right? <laughs> Tenant's cooperation has both corroborated evidence collected during the investigation and provided additional evidence against Mario Fernandez for his role in the planning and execution of Jared's murder. State prosecutor, Nelson said at the press conference announcing the charges against Fernandez. They hired him two days after Valentine's Day in 2022, which is quite sickening to think about. Officially hiring him then. You know, wow, what did you guys talk about on Valentine's Day? On August 17th of 2023, Shanna was arrested and charged with first degree murder, conspiracy to commit murder, solicitation to commit a capital felony and child abuse. The indictment states that between November already from November of 2021 and February of 2022, although she was already planning this from 2015, according to the indictment. But between those dates, okay, the couple solicited or requited Tennant to murder. Henry Tennant did not act alone. Mario Fernandez did not plan alone. And Shanna Gardner's indictment acknowledges her central and key role in the cold, calculated, premeditated murder of Jared Bridegan. They will be apparently at this point tried together. She's actually fighting extradition. So that's interesting. Normally they don't really do that, but she's doing that. She's like, I don't want to go back to Florida. I'm just going to stay here. So they're just like, oh man, making it difficult for us here. Shanna and Mario are both facing the death penalty. Oh yes. <laughs> Hope and fear. <laughs> okay, the police tracked down three handwritten checks that tied Fernandez to Tenen. Tenen was allegedly paid to kill Jared. 
investigators said that there were 35 phone calls or phone contacts between the two men in February and 30 more in March. So 65 calls total. Again, how dumb that they thought it wouldn't be, that they wouldn't find this out. So Jared's brother, Adam, said, I won't get into specifics, but I did have several conversations with Jared where he did express concerns that something like this could happen to him. He did have concerns on his life, which is, again, the saddest thing in the world when we've seen so many cases where they're like, I think my spouse or ex-spouse or whoever, I think if, if anything happens to me, it's them. And how sad that that gut instinct is so often right. Trust your gut, trust your gut, right? And make sure you switch up your routine. We just try to learn from all these cases. And the one vulnerability that Jared had was that he kept the same route. He drove the same route, the same routine. And that's how they were able to catch him in the most vulnerable place. But it was, I've driven around there now a little bit on Google Earth, okay, on Google Maps. And I could see, well, that's how he would get onto the main road. So it would be hard to avoid. But maybe if, if this helps anyone out there just to switch up your routine, do it, okay? Bernie said, keep on snarky, love a G. <laughs> Thank you so much. Just desserts, Mario. <laughs> so Jared's wife said, for 547 days, we hoped and prayed that this day would come, she said, as Jared Breidigan's brothers, Adam and Justin, stood next to her. Shanna's arrest ends one horrific chapter in our pursuit for justice for Jared. And now we open a new one. This next chapter will be excruciating. Yes. So, Shanna Gardner Fernandez was arrested in Eastern Washington shortly after the indictment was handed down by a grand jury. So here we've got some document time. State of Florida versus Mario Enrique Fernandez Saldana and Shanna Lee Gardner. Indictment for murder in the first degree, conspiracy to commit murder, solicitation to commit a capital felony, and child abuse. In the name of and by authority of the state of Florida, the grand jurors, so see, grand jury indictment, okay, of the state of Florida and county of Duval, impaneled and sworn to inquire, and true presentment make in and for the body of the county of Duval upon the oath do present a charge that count one on February 16th that these two okay 2022 in the county of Duval instead of Florida did unlawfully and from a premeditated design to effect the death of Jared Bridegan did then and there kill the said Jared Bridegan a human being and during the commission of the aforementioned murder in the first degree did use a weapon contrary to the provisions of that section right count two would be between November 1st, 2021 and February 16th of 2022. Um, they say Mario and Shanna on or between May 1st, 2015 and March 16th of 2023 in the county of Duval in the state of Florida did agree, conspire, combine or confederate with other human beings to effect the death of Jared Bridegan, a human being contrary to the provisions of Section 7804 of Florida statutes, right? And look there, she thinks she's so smart. So good that she was finally freaking arrested. Now, count three, the two of them, between November 1st, 2021 and February 16th, 2022, did solicit another to wit Henry Tennant to commit an offense prohibited by law to wit, first degree murder, and in the course of such solicitation did command, encourage, hire, or request Henry to another to engage in specific conduct which would constitute such offense or an attempt to commit such offense. And then count four would be uh, the child abuse intentionally committing an act that could reasonably be expected to result in physical or mental injury to a person under the age of 18 years without causing great bodily harm, permanent disability, or permanent disfigurement. So she's fighting extradition, as I say. Uh, this little snippet is from Facebook. I didn't. I cropped out the person's name in case they don't want to be here <laughs> on YouTube. But there is a group as well for this case that you can follow on Facebook. I'll link everything for you. Okay. So how Shanna's arrest went down, as told on the Nancy Grace podcast by Rebecca Rosenberg. It was about 9 a.m. And it was a complete surprise. Shanna was inside a West Richland home that her parents bought for her late last year. Local officials and ATF the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms and Explosives, a law enforcement agency. People are finding that quite interesting. Maybe they thought she was armed, right? Executed Shanna's arrest. And it was a complete surprise. They arrested her, took her into custody. We know her mother, Shelley Gardner, was home at the time. I'm not sure if the kids were there. And she was taken into custody. And now she's in the local jail awaiting extradition. And a guy on the show then weighed in, his name is Dale Carson, and he said, the ATF involvement indicates a UFAP, which is unlawful flight to avoid prosecution. And it's 
of interest that ATF was handling it because there may be a firearm connection to this matter and why the search was so abrupt. Okay, I'm going to show you a video interview of Shanna as well. Right. So this is their trigger man, as they're calling him. Their trigger man, Henry Tennant, was born in 1961 in Hawkinsville, GA in, Pul in Pulaski County, in the central part of the state and north of Macon. He went to Vienna High School and notes on one of his Facebook accounts that he studied at Middle Georgia Technical College. At some point in his life, he moved to Jacksonville, Florida. They're not sure exactly when. Now, if you look at his criminal history, it's pretty extensive. <laughs> So don't remember, if you go back all the way, like 98, driving without a license, trespassing, battery, criminal mischief, worthless check, obtaining property, less than $150. You can just read all of that. Domestic battery, all kinds of things. Yeah, they, they found the trigger man, right? Okay. So, yeah, that's the person that they hired. Those two smart ones, you see there on the right-hand side. Henry Tennant rented a home. This is the connection. They've proven this connection, which is just adding to the case. Good luck to the defense attorneys. Henry Tennant rented a home that Mario apparently owned. I don't know how he owned it. I would think that uh, Missy over there owned it with her parents' money and was probably put in his name or something. I mean, he was a maintenance man at the gym when she met him. I don't know how. It, I'm not saying maintenance men at the gym can't own a whole bunch of properties. It just seems like really strange. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, huh. Okay, interesting. So one of the homes that he owned, Henry had been a tenant at. He rented it, right? Between 2017 and October 2022. So, yes. Okay. So we got that. I think that's just about it, right? So no, they're being held on no bail. The next court date for her is September 14th. September 14th. So we'll be following to see what the heck happens there. So glad that she's held without bond. That's fantastic. Uh, let me find that little clip for you, and then we're still going to look at just a few things. we still got to do map time. We're going to be looking at the press conferences. They're not long at all as well, just so that you can see, especially the latest one. And I hope that you're enjoying the deep dive here. Okay, let me just find that video for you. Hold on one second, please. I think it's, I think it's this one. If not, I'll find it for you. Don't worry. Let's just take the presentation off. In February. February. Okay. This, this year, 33-year-old year, father, Jared, Jared Pridigan, Pridigan, was gunned down, down in front of his two-year-old two daughter. It's a murder that stunned Jack's, Jack's Beach neighbors, neighbors which, which have rallied, rallied behind his, his widow, widow and four children. children. Now, some tabloids have cast suspicion on his ex-wife, Shanna Gardner. Those tabloids followed and photographed her and questioned her innocence. And Gardner has not spoken publicly to anyone about Breitigan's murder until now. And tonight, in the only TV interview she says that she will be doing, Action News Jack's Kristen Reary has the exclusive interview with Gardner. As her innocence has come into question, Shanna Gardner spoke to me in the only TV interview she says she'll be doing to tell her side of the story. I do want. Yes, yes. Tell us your side of the story. Are you ready, everyone? Here we go. People understand you know, where I'm coming from. Almost five months after Jared Brightigan was murdered in the street in front of his two-year-old daughter, we spoke with his ex-wife, who has not commented publicly so far. Our first question, why have you stayed silent? I was asked to not talk to the media or give a public statement, but with the level of speculation, I felt that now it was necessary to to speak out. Shanna Gardner revealed she was asked by Jared Breitigan's widow, Kirsten, not to speak publicly, but we wanted to know how the relationship could have gotten to that point. I'm sure they were, you would say that we've had happy moments. I mean, we share the two most beautiful children in the world. In 2015, Jared and Shannon. Mm, yeah, don't say this lady. Huh? <laughs> Isn't it like in hindsight watching that? Oh, my goodness. OK, here we go. And a divorced their court records, which we obtained from the St. John's County court system, revealed a long, complicated process lasting over five years. Anytime divorce comes into any situation, it's messy. It just is. I will say that I think that we both love our kids. Jared and Shanna both. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's just messy. It just is. Okay, alleged killer. 
facing the death penalty. <laughs> yeah. Very messy. So glad you got arrested now. Okay. Both wanted full custody. The court file details allegations of spying, deceit, and more. In the end, Shanna and Jared reached an agreement. They shared custody. And whenever the children were at one parent's house, the other would come over Wednesday and have a date night. That's exactly what Jared and his twins did the night he was killed. It was actually one of the, one of the things. I'm sorry. Um. Not one tear, madam. We don't see it rolling down your cheek. Mm -mm. Just like, <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, then. I remember my son no talking tears. in and him saying that it was a good date night. But that. No, oh, it was a good date night before you had your ex-husband murdered, right? Right. Happiness would end just minutes after leaving Shanna's house just over two miles from her home. In a quiet neighborhood with few security cameras, a tire was rolled out into the street. Jared got out of his car to move it and was shot dead. His two-year-old daughter sat in the car, strapped into her car seat alone for three minutes before someone came to help. I was shocked. Um, I fell to the floor because I was devastated um, for what I was going to have to tell my kids. Mm, you sound a lot like Corey Richens right about now. Why don't you write a book about it? Hmm? Why don't you write a children's book about it to help them deal with the grief? Because you care so much, right? Yeah, right. Oh my word. You guys. Jared died in that street, leaving behind four children and a heartbroken family. They were, I think, in shock. Later, in a blog post, Shanna's mother said she was not invited to the funeral. I asked Shanna about the situation. His family did not invite me or want me there. But. Oh, you didn't get invited. I wonder why. Apparently, Jared's uh, family and friends said the way he, tr the way that she treated him, since they got divorced in 2015. Sadly, they're not surprised that she got arrested. In fact, they were waiting for that, right? So she's like, "Yeah, I don't know. They didn't want me there." Yeah, right. You had your own narc party, right? Your own tribute to pretend, right? Mm. The day before a vigil hosted by Jared's widow at Celebration Park, Shanna was photographed at the park with her kids by the tabloid Daily Mail. Talk about a violation of privacy, because my kids know that they were photographed and they were worried. The tabloid presented the facts in a way that leave room for speculation about Shanna having a role in Jared's death, citing their rocky divorce papers and her absence. From this video is from a year ago, you guys. Just remember that. So what you're seeing here is they're like, hmm, people online were speculating. Okay, now we, speculation's okay. If we go back in time to a year, we can't be like, she's definitely a killer. We can't even say that now. She's innocent or proven guilty in a court of law. However, a year ago, they're like, look there. <laughs> now, divorce documents obtained exclusively by Daily Mail tell the sorry tale of escalating tensions and increasingly vicious allegations leveled, for the most part, by Shanna against her husband. But DailyMail.com has learned there were cracks behind the apparently picture-perfect blended family. Bridegan's ex and their children did not attend his funeral and instead held a separate memorial service some weeks later. Thank you so much, Heather. Really appreciate it. From the funeral. Even though we didn't always get along, he was still the father of my kids. So I asked Shanna the question. Did you have anything to do with Jared's murder? No, I did not have anything to do with it. Okay, guys, true crimers, what do you spot there? You should know by now. <laughs> did you have anything to do with your ex-husband's murder? She's like, no. No, I did not have anything to do with this murder. You could just say no. The more you say, the more guilty you are. <laughs> According to the body language experts, right? That's what they say. You could just say no. But she's like, eyes closed. Mm -mm, mm -mm, no, no, no. Um, I did not. Let's watch that one more time, shall we? divorce papers and her absence from the funeral. Even though we didn't always get along, he was still the father of my kids. So I asked Shanna the question. Did you have anything to do with Jared's murder? No, I did not have anything to do with his murder. Shanna says she has no idea if the murder was targeted or what Jared was involved in, saying they ran in different circles. But Action News Jax reported in June, Shanna had hired criminal defense attorney Hank Cox. <laughs> They ran in different circles, okay? You guys are like duping delight, slow blink, all those things. She did all of them, all of the ones we'd usually see. She just didn't do the Chris Watts, just want them home. 
Oh man, but she's like, no, I have no idea. We run in different circles. I'm not sure what he was into. Oh, you want to go there? Okay. The huge, eh? He was referred to me by several friends and ultimately my kids' images and videos were being used in the media without consent. Shanna said Cox was hired to protect her kids. I asked her if she thinks she will face criminal charges. She says no, that she's cooperated with detectives. Do you have any idea who might have done this? I do not have any idea. Any idea. <laughs> yes, Stefan, W-A-T-T-S, what? <laughs> you definitely OG. Stefan was there from the beginning days. <laughs> W A T T S. Oh man, but she's like, definitely not. Okay then. Nice try, lady. Very interesting. Very interesting in hindsight. Ugh, my word. And she's like, my friends and family, they recommended this attorney. Oh, did your mommy recommend an attorney for you? And then you also want to deflect with the kids. Of course, they don't want the kids to be shown in the media, but she really deflects with that, huh? She really does. Okay, one more time. Those were being used in the media without consent. Shanna said Cox was hired to protect her kids. I asked her if she thinks she will face criminal charges. She says no, that she's cooperated with detectives. Do you have any idea who might have done this? I do not have any idea. I, as I said, we've been divorced. We don't run in the same social circles. I, all I know is that I would never want anybody to go through this. She told me if... Oh, poor you, right? I don't want anyone to go through this. We don't run in the same circle. Well, if you're running the same courtroom and you're fighting a lot and accusing him of things that he probably did not at all do. Yeah. And then you just got your, your, your next husband. And then some piercings. Okay. And told the tattoo parlor all sorts of things like, hey, you got a hitman, basically. Yeah, okay. But you don't run in the same circles, right? Clearly. It's you and your circle. That's the sus ones. It's a red flag circle. That's what it is. Okay, continue on. She could speak to Jared again. She'd say one thing. Honestly, that I wish it weren't like this. Mm, she's like, wish it weren't like this. Well, like what? I wish things could, could have been and could be different. Mm, sure you do. That's why you planned it since 2015, right? <laughs> I think the biggest thing that the defense attorneys... Actually, the biggest thing the prosecutors are going to have to work on is proving a motive. But I think the contentious divorce and the battle, the custody battle, that should be enough. But it's not the usual life insurance because she comes from a very wealthy family and all that. However, however, she did email Jared's wife, Kirsten, just days after he was murdered and asked for her to return some library books for the kids. And she also asked for a copy of Jared's death certificate. Now, I don't know if that would be like to her some kind of trophy, like a certificate, like, yep, I just want proof that he's no longer here. Or did you want the death certificate to try to get life insurance or what is it? You know what I mean? I don't think she would have the rights to that. I'm just wondering, you know, would it be for the kids? You know, as we saw Lori Vallow Daybell also cashing in. Remember that? Look at her. Just want it to be different. Sure you do. And Shanna told me, despite this happening in her neighborhood, despite many people around her discussing the case, she has no intention of leaving Jack's Beach or Jacksonville. I mean, she has no intention of leaving you guys. <laughs> and then the next minute she's like, okay, mommy and daddy, I need a house. And they're like, don't worry, don't worry. We're going to buy you a beautiful million dollar house. Okay, just come to the West Coast freaking where was it richland richmond washington come here just come live here it's okay you can have your own little funeral okay and then you can live in your one million dollar home and just will make this all go away don't worry we're going to tell the media that you are no longer even in contact with your current husband either wow okay so that's what we have there then let me show you this oh yeah, let me first show you the little press conference clip here, and then we can do some map time so I can show you where the road is. I was driving on there. Okay. So this one, and holy crap. If you've ever heard a press conference with absolutely horrendous sound, I can promise you this is the worst one. Sorry about that, guys, but this. <laughs> I have boosted it beyond boosting because the sound is so very, very bad in this one. Okay. 
Yes, Perniel says her sad little girl attitude is awful using her kids in her lives. It does remind you of Corey Richens, doesn't it? A little bit like Corey Richens meets Lori Vallow Daybell. I mean, remember, she was also uh, her and her family are part of the LDS church. So I'm just saying she's not really behaving according to their belief systems there at all. Not at all, you know. SB Tobin says a death certificate or social security benefits for the kids. Exactly. Keep up the snark. Kathleen says social security survivor benefits for the kids. Yes, exactly. The same as in Lori Vallow Daybell. When Charles Vallow, if you haven't followed the case, I've got a whole playlist there for you in a deep dive, so go check it out. But when Charles Vallow, her fourth husband, was shot, that's exactly what she did. She got the death certificate and started cashing in for social security benefits for the kids. Yes. Oh, and earlier Danielle Savoy said non-contracted denial per behavior panel didn't is usually more rel reliable than did not. That as well. That as well. Okay. So let's hope that you can hear this nicely. Let's play it. Boosted. Before we begin, let me tell you that this was from the day. I think this was from the day, but just the most recent press conference right after Shanna was arrested. She was arrested on August 17th of 2023. And then they had this press conference to update everyone, which was amazing to hear. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us in what will be my last public update on the investigation of the murder of Jared Bright again on February 16th of 2022 in Jacksonville Beach. I'm joined today by our law enforcement partners, Chief Jean Paul Smith of the Jacksonville Beach Police Department and many of his staff, Special Agent Bob Bryson of ATF Jacksonville and Jacksonville Beach Mayor Hoffman. We are also joined by Jared's widow, Kirsten, Kirsten's parents and Jared's brother, brothers, Adam and Justin and Adam's wife. Thank you for being here today. We promised at the outset of this investigation we would not relent until we uncovered the truth of Jared's murder, the whole and entire truth. This morning, a Fourth Circuit grand jury indicted Shana Gardner for first-degree murder, conspiracy to commit first-degree murder, solicitation to commit first-degree murder, and child abuse, all related to the murder of Jared Brightigan, Shana's ex-husband. Gardner was arrested shortly after and taken into custody by ATF Washington Field Division agents in West Richland, Washington. Gardner will be extradited to Duval County to face these charges. We will be filing a notice of our intent to seek the death penalty, as we have also done in the case of Mario Fernandez. I cannot stress enough the extraordinary commitment and teamwork of the folks on the stage with me today, the Jacksonville Beach detectives, ATF agents, and our prosecutors in this case. While too many to, to name, I would like to personally commend some folks. Chief Smith, Jacksonville Beach detectives Chris Johns and Jason Lamont, ATF Special Agent Bryson and his team of special agents and intelligence analysts at ATF Jacksonville office, including Lindsay Butler, Alyssa Simmons, and Mick Stengel, and our prosecution team, led by Assistant State Attorney Christina Stifler including Lee Wingard, Homicide Director Alan Mizrahi, Chief Assistant Lee Hutton, and First Assistant Stephen Siegel, Siegel, and our victim advocate, Mackenzie Roden. This investigation has uncovered the truth of Jared's murder. Henry Tennan did not act alone, Mario Fernandez did not plan alone, and Shanna Gardner's indictment acknowledges her central and key role in the cold, calculated, and premeditated murder of Jared Brightigan. We will provide copies of the indictment and all other evidentiary details and information will be provided during the discovery process. Thank you all for being here today and providing the public of this development. And that was it. And if you go to the Facebook page of the Jacksonville Beach Department, go and look at the original clip. <laughs> and you'll know how much I boosted that. I'm like, what? We can hardly hear a thing. Uh, leap into progress said, I live half a mile from where Jared was shot. It's a very violent crime and we're not used to it. Used to in our little beach town. I'm so sorry. I can just imagine. Also, Emily, 
Uh, Weinstop said she didn't need the life insurance. Her parents are multi-millionaires and she doesn't even need to work. She needed the death certificate to close the custody case for sole custody. Yes, I agree. But you don't know how petty a person like this can be. And I say that because remember, when they got divorced, then Jared got a cash settlement, even though her parents financially supported them when they were married, right? And so eventually he went on to become a Microsoft executive, was earning great money, living in a home, $780,000 home with his wife, Kirsten, and their two kids, and then seeing his other two kids from, the, uh, from his previous marriage, all of that. But you just never know if she's like, you know what, I'm going to get the settlement so that it's like, I don't know, like, like getting revenge for her parents or something like, oh, he got a settlement last time. How dare he, right? Uh, welcome, welcome your key mama. Okay, so that is that one. I just want to show you one more, which is this one here. I'm going to link the previous press conference in the description box for you. I'm not going to play it right now. I just want to show you this. This is um, Kirsten, Jared's wife, who's now a widow, shame. And she hasn't been able to see the twins, his twins, ever since, which is also sad because she had built a relationship with them. You know, she was like a second mom to them. People care about Jared. They care about me and our kids. And they care about this community and getting these people off the streets. That's it? That was so quick. Okay, that's the clip there. I just want to show you because, oh, shame. The little kid's like, why are you sad, mommy? But shame, she was, she was the one in the car, you know? And she's so strong. Um, okay, yeah, no bond, no bail. The next court date is September 14th, and it's an extradition hearing, and then they need to get her ass there to Florida, which she's trying to resist, and then... The two of them will be tried together, so I'm sure there's going to be a whole bunch of court proceedings before we actually find out, well, when's the trial? Wayne, thank you so much. really appreciate it. Thank you for your $10 Canadian dollar super sticker. Uh, also, I want to show you the map time. That's the other thing I want to show you. So let's do that. Okay, it's map time, everybody. We're back. Okay, so let's get that map ready for you. I just want to show you where it happened so that you know. And don't worry, I'm not doxing anyone or anything. Just I was just going around the street trying to match it to what Court TV was showing there with Matt Johnson out at the scene. And I was like, okay, 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 let's find where this happened and how. Where's this vulnerable spot where they put the tire in the road? You know, because it's a one-way road. So Jared would have had to drive down that one-way road to get back onto this main road to go back home. And that was where they're like, yeah, we're going to wait there and we're going to put the tire there. So let me move it like this. Okay, make it nice and big for you. So this Marsh Inlet Court is where Shanna lived with her husband Mario and her kids that she had with Jared, right? That she shared with Jared, the twins. Okay, so he took, he picked up the kids, the twins, and he took them out for dinner and an activity, and he was going to drop them back off. But at some point, he also picked up his two and a half year old daughter, Bexley, and put her in the back of the car and said to his wife, I'm just going to drop them off, and I'm going to get Bexley some ice cream, and then afterwards, um, I'm coming home, love you. And they never saw him again, which is incredibly sad. Uh, L Y R Y C says they were clearly following him several times prior to, from her house to see his regular route, as he could have also taken A one A or Third Street to J T B two hundred two instead of that shortcut. Thank you so much for that information. I really appreciate it. I wonder as well because in those court proceedings, uh, she was accusing him of a whole bunch of stuff, but then he was. Um, accusing her of things as well. And what he accused her of was putting surveillance, like trackers on his vehicle. So I wonder if she just made it really easy for herself to just keep, you know, 
putting a track on his vehicle and tracking exactly how he drives and getting to know that. So, but maybe, yeah, uh, maybe follow it as well. So from this Marsh Inlet Court, uh, let me just zoom out so you can see where we are. Jacksonville, Florida. Okay, for anyone who's not from America, we're in Florida now. We've covered quite a few cases from Florida. Florida is a very interesting place. Maybe the most notable that you'll know of would be Gabby Petito and the laundries and all of that, right? But there's a lot of cases here. Um, I like Florida, though. <laughs> I've been there before and I would love to visit again. Okay, but moving on. So here around this Marsh Inlet Court, and he would have driven home to St. Augustine. So I'm just going to zoom out one more time so you can see. Would have driven home like this southward and then westward to go home to St. Augustine. Um, but as that... Uh, so sorry, I'm not sure how exactly to say your handle. L-Y-R-Y-C said... Maybe they had followed him because there's many ways that one could go home to where he was staying in St. Augustine. So, I mean, it's, it's quite a drive as well. I mean, this whole drive is like an hour. So to think, I mean, he's so dedicated to his kids. He just wanted to see his kids on a Wednesday night when they shared custody. You know, so I think how it worked was if the kids stayed with him for two weeks, then on a Wednesday, she would be able to pick them up and go for dinner and have an outing and then if the kid stayed with her for the two weeks then he would pick them up on a Wednesday as well he called it daddy date night so he went there and what happened was he drove on this road here the sanctuary boulevard you can see it splits like this he would have driven there to get back onto this Butler Boulevard and I'm going to show it to you now we're going to take the Google man onto the ground as well uh, Desi says do you think they didn't expect Bexley in the back I wonder as well. I wonder. And there were bullet holes that went into the interior of the car and could have hit her. So that's why there's charges of child abuse as well. Uh, thank you, Desi. Maybe they, maybe they didn't expect that. True. So yes, going down this way to get back onto this road um, is how you would have driven. So if we go there, let's put the little man there quickly. Google man, can you go there for us? Okay. And we turn around. And so here, they would have been hiding out here, waiting for him to come this way. Uh, generally quietish. If you're local, let me know. But what I've read is it's a quiet one-way street. So if he drove here and here like that, you can see on the news clips, you will see. Let's just go a little bit further. And on the news clips, you will see where, like, Matt Johnson from Court TV was standing right here. You could see this palm tree and you could see these trees next to it. And they say it was right right here where it happened so this is it this is where it is and they would have been hiding out right here in these this like wooded area and then waited to see his car come down here and then put a tire in the road and then he would drive this way and see the tire in the road and you see you can't pass it can't pass it so he stopped the vehicle put his hazards on got out the vehicle and then he was ambushed and shot multiple times and he died at the scene. It took three minutes for someone in the area, you know, local to run up to the car because they probably heard all the shots, right? To run up to the car and go and help him. And they pulled him out of the car and the daughter in the back was crying, screaming and crying. It must have been horrendous. So, yeah, if you do want to just check out the maps just to make sure it's the Sanctuary Boulevard here and there's an island in the middle. So, yeah, going this way like this. And it would have happened right here as you go around the bend. Yep, like that. Okay. So, of course, they were really dumb criminals, as they usually are, because not only did the police see on surveillance later that Ford F-150 truck, but also the tire that they left in the road, because, of course, the tire was still there, was a Ford F-150 tire, an old one. But you know what I mean, like these people honestly so yeah you would drive like this and then you'd get onto this main road here sorry buckle up <laughs> Stefan are you telling them buckle up <laughs> Butler Boulevard and then you get onto the main road like that yes okay see and then you're driving nice and quick to get back home yeah, Gator, okay, Gator Hater says it's not remote. So yeah, I'm not really saying it's remote. I just think at 8 p.m. It's quietish, right? It's your average, typical HOA neighborhood. 
Homeowners Association neighborhood. Is that what you're saying? Typical neighborhood, 8 o'clock. It's not like heavy traffic. That's what I mean, right? Okay. Yeah, Teresa says that's even worse than I thought. I thought he was shot after exiting the car. He, he, he was? He was shot after exiting the car. When I read the article, they say that a neighbor or a local ran up to, up to him and pulled him out of the car. So I don't know if he was shot at and then was like in, you know, try to like shield himself and get back in the car, but he died at the scene. Yes. So can you imagine the horror that that two and a half year old saw happening right, right here? Oh man. Okay. So that's what we have there. Uh, I'll just quickly, mm, I'm not going to show it. I'll rather link the Instagram because there's lots of pictures of the kids there. I don't really want to show it here on YouTube, but if you want to go and check out the justice for Jared B page, there's a Facebook page, there's an Instagram page, and there's also a foundation. It's called the Brightigan Foundation. So let's, yes, we want to follow the link. Hold on. Here we go. I'll show you um, his wife made a foundation in his honor. Okay. And it says bringing comfort to children experiencing the un imaginable okay so if you look at this page you will see and i will link everything as i say everything i show you i'm going to be linking for you so that you can find it easily in the description box uh, you can see here's the link to the instagram page you can donate and if you just go to this page it's the official uh, brightiganfoundation.org and if we just go and click on the about page L Y R Y C says, sounds like Lyric. Oh, Lyric. Okay, thank you, Music. Kirsten started the Brightigan Foundation. They also provide Bexley boxes. Yes. So Bexley was a little girl who was in the back, you know, the daughter. Shame. And they now provide Bexley boxes with essentials to police stations to help calm kids in a crisis or trauma situation. And uh, they do that because when Kirsten was called to the police station, she didn't know how long they're going to be there. And she realized, oh my word, I don't like pack anything. I don't have whatever it is, like bottles, wet wipes, things that I need, snacks, like a Bexley box would help, you know, so they, they actually make this now. About Kirsten Breidigan founded the Breidigan Foundation in September of 2022 after the tragic murder of her husband, Jared Breidigan, early in 2022. Jared was ambushed and shot to death outside of his vehicle on February 16th, so there you go, that confirms that, while his two-year-old daughter Bexley sat helplessly strapped into her car seat. After witnessing this horrific act, Bexley was taken to a police station where she not only spent hours without either of her parents, but was also without basic necessities for a toddler, such as a sippy cup or the correct size diapers. The officers did their best to comfort Bexley, but had limited supplies on hand. In an effort to make children's experiences at police stations a little less traumatic and scary, Project Bexley Box was born. Bexley Box aims to provide comfort items and basic necessities for children brought to police stations without their caregivers. No, we were we were we were synchronized, Lyric. No problem. Thank you so much. Uh, so who Jared was? Jared Brightigan's highest purpose in life was his role as a husband to Kirsten and as a father to his four children. In a Facebook post, Jared summed up his priorities in life. First was his relationship with his Heavenly Father and his son, Jesus Christ. Second was his relationship with best friend and wife, Kirsten. And third was the privilege of being the father to his four children. These priorities shaped his every decision and he is greatly missed. The Brightigan Foundation will help carry on his legacy by finding the good in the midst of hardship and providing love and comfort to children in need. So I will make sure to link this for you so you can go check it out and you can donate if you want to donate. You can check out the team, donate, contact and deliveries if you want to. I like the big, the Bexley box. What a nice idea, right? Uh, Cannabis Queen says that's quite beautiful. It is, right? It is. Okay. So just checking that I'm not missing anything. Um, so that, that's it for now. Just remember that this case is about Jared Breidigan. It is not about those freaking losers who've now been arrested. I actually, <laughs> although that Henry Tenengai is the one who pulled the trigger and he was the hitman who was hired. Yes, so he committed the murder. I gave him some credit for, for snitching, at least being like, okay, I'll talk. Yeah, I'll throw them right under the bus. Thank you for doing that, sir. 
My word, that's what they needed. Because the minute that he said, okay, I'm going to testify against Mario, Mario was arrested that same day. And who knows what evidence they then got, maybe search warrant or whatever it would be, to then finally get that ex-wife who was living in the comfort of the wealth that her parents had created. Hmm? She was living there in a million dollar home, just like, I'm fine. Everything's fine. We're good. Huh, all these shady, shady boys. Yeah, no, no, no. You're in jail now too. You've just been arrested and are facing the death penalty. And you'll be tried with that actual husband of yours. She's still married to him. She's just like, yeah, I'm just going to go live with my mom and dad. Thank you. So, yes. <laughs> Peter Pronzo says, thank you, G. Well done. Thank you so much, everyone. I hope that you enjoyed the deep dive today. Please like and share uh, with hashtag Jared Brydigan. Please do check out the links that I'm going to put in the description box for you. I will do timestamps for you if you want to revisit this. And I will also keep you posted. So if you want to see updates on this case, make sure that you are subscribed. Hit the bell. Don't forget to look at the community tab. Okay, very important because I post things there too. YouTube Shorts. Okay, some people don't like short form content, but that's where you get like quick 60 second updates. If there's just a small update, I'll share it over there. So check those out as well. Check out the live streams, check out the video section. There's always stuff I'm making for you. And if you want to be ahead <laughs> and you want behind the scenes updates, I would recommend uh, Patreon. Like today, I did a forest jog and I just gave uh, my patrons a, a synopsis of this case. What are we covering? What are we talking about? What happened? And what will I be deep diving? So you get behind the scenes updates there and footage and fury and all sorts of things. Thank you so much, everyone. Really appreciate it. Thank you, mods. Really appreciate everything that you do. And I will see you all in the next one. I never like going. I, I never like to go. You know, Chinny is like, member snark stream requested. <laughs> Soon. I could definitely snark about these ones soon <laughs> okay everyone stay safe and remember to change up your routine if you've got a gut feel that you're in danger trust your gut okay and i'll see you soon bye